Okay, so I was very lucky to uh, demo Hell the Last Saga at Virtually UK Games Expo on the weekend, uh, run by Sam Healy. Uh, he took us through the rules. I played both the expedition and the camp scenario, or the first kind of story that they've been using for demos. Uh, the the bloody horn and uh, we used tabletop simulator to do that and i had full groups while we're doing that so there's four of us playing both scenarios now the first thing they went through was uh the player board um now for me i was on i backed this for a dollar and i wasn't 100 percent sure i had quite uh, quite a few reservations uh and that's why i really wanted to play the demo to kind of see what it played like in person as best as we could so the characters, I knew the miniatures were going to be awesome. It's Mythic Games. They're renowned for their miniatures uh, and their past games have been fantastic in terms of miniatures. That was not an issue for me. What the things I was worried about with the game in, in the most sense was the fact that it was going to be a bit dull, a bit boring in the sense that you're just going to be rolling dice to read pa paragraphs from a book and that was going to be it. Um, so I'm going to talk through kind of some of the mechanics of the game and then I'll talk about my thoughts at the end. So each character has a character board. It works on six different skill sets. So that's what those symbols are on the top right, where you've got Valence, Defense, Agility, Survival, Perception and Will. Very similar to Dungeons and Dragons, for example. And the number is the number of dice that you roll for that test, with the exception of Agility, which is the, your movement, number of hexes you can move. Um, each of those characters... If we go to the left hand side just underneath the uh, her portrait has a ranking in the clan okay a clan ranking and you know how much sway they have in the clan and then to the right of that is one of the three different religions they have in the game which is norse christianity and wild and this one's a wild uh but bugren dugren is a super fancy brawl character bergen bergen uh, she's called Bergen and she's a wild, for example. Okay, so when she's praying and when she's um, taking the abilities of prey cards, she's going to only take the effects of those types of, of, of uh, abilities. Then each character will have um, an innate ability. Hers is fierce and when she's in melee, she's a shield maiden. She's all about uh, attacking in melee. Uh, she will um, change the kind of a wild symbol. It's not a wild symbol, a kind of activation symbol it's a snake eating its own tail uh, whenever it's a side of the dice and when they roll that they get an extra success she does she's also got three other unique abilities which are on the right hand side combat protection and shoot one um, she gets to roll an additional dice when she attacks in melee she gets to roll perform a defense test roll an additional dice so when she defends against attack she rolls an individual device um, and then she can shoot, so she can actually be one hex away uh, and shoot an adjacent hex, enemies in an adjacent hex, which is really cool. Uh, now, the idea of having uh, these abilities is this is also your wounds, your hit points. Each one of those abilities, those three abilities, can take two wounds. So she effectively has six hit points. And when she takes two hit points on a particular ability, that ability no longer can help. And when she takes six hit points, she's not killed, she's not down, and she has to spend her next whole action to just stand up. Also, each character will either have a familiar or a special ability, uh, which is on the left-hand side. She's got Olaf the Bear Cub, and Sam went through uh, some of the, um, the narrative of Bergen and how that links to Olaf, which is really cool, which I'll leave you to find out when we do the story. Uh, familiars will have their own set of abilities and own rules. Uh, effectively you send them out as an action and they can do stuff okay uh, so that's really really cool and um and it, it made a lot of sense you know kind of having D, &D stats skill tests quite similar to uh mansions of madness it, it, it likened to that i i thought it sounded a bit like that which was really quite cool um and having these familiars are going to be so cool because you're going to get so attached to them and uh you, you're going to learn learn how to play with them um and i really like that about this game um, coming away from both, uh, just a, on a side, was getting used to the characters and how they played. I think it's going to be awesome, which is very similar to kind of Kingdom Death. So that kind of idea. Okay, so this was just one example of a character. Uh, this would be one of the ones that we took out to the expedition. Um, and it, it was just going through kind of like how they worked. Now, going on to the Kickstarter page, after I played the demos, 
I noticed that they had upgraded abilities. And can you see how they got inlays on the abilities and on their clan um, standing? So this is going to upgrade, I'm pretty sure, as my prediction, this will be upgraded through the campaign. So you're going to change your abilities. You're going to be able to upgrade them. You're going to change um, your your standing in the clan as different things happen in that story, which sounds amazing. <coughs> and I'm very excited for it. I think that's going to be an awesome part of it. So the next part is the uh, kind of clan board, which you're going to put all your resources. It's going to do all the uh, kind of uh, management of your resources and what's happening in this scenario. At the top, you've got a turn order. So uh, different scenarios will last for different amounts of turns. Whenever you see these yellow circles, they're kind of story triggers. So you'll go to like what's called a bookmark page, which will have all the letters and which paragraph to read from the storybook. I'll talk about storybook in a minute. Um, and they will change different times. Sometimes you'll have none in the turn track. Sometimes you'll have mo mo loads more. Then you have wood, food, and um, morale as your three main resources used for different things, of course. You have plus one actions, which are really important because when you... The fate cards, in this case was the camp scenario, on the left-hand side there, when they reveal, that they're pretty much always quite bad. Uh, so you might need to just spend that extra action. But obviously, once you've used those actions, those extra actions, they're gone. Uh, but they're only for each scenario. So that's important. Below that, you've got the actual uh, scenario um, uh, and, and kind of like the how you're doing in those tracks. So objectives, the objectives of that scenario. So you can see you've got survive, which is kind of like for every scenario. Find your clan. So you're trying to bring the clan together in this particular, uh, this, these two scenarios. And heal Ar Alva, which is all about this camp phase. So you're really just trying to heal Ar Alva to get him up to that story icon at the last space. Now, below that are your prayer cards. So you've got the three different um, religions, Norse, Christianity, and Wild. Uh, you can have at any one time, you can have up to two of those um, praise, prayers at uh, any one time that you can, you know, benefit from. And then moving over to the right-hand side of the board, which is the enemies, you've got threat. So enemies come as threats to start with until you reveal them, either by going in and taking a kind of ambush or by using a perception test to reveal what those are. So you use what's on the... Um, the uh, threat AI here until you reveal them and then the miniatures come out and then you look at these big hostile um, cards. What's really cool is once you've revealed that hostile card, it'll tell you to go to the storybook again and it'll describe to you what these creatures are, why they're here, maybe a story trigger, whatever it might be, which is so cool. I absolutely loved it in this demo when you kept going back to that narrative and you started to picture and you started to fill in what was kind of going on it was awesome um below this you'll have different prayers you might have items you might have loads of different things so there's lots of other things which are scenario specific uh, and actually if you look at the kickstarter page you're going to get these boxes which is kind of legacy element and in those boxes are going to be all of the components you need to populate this um clan board so the storybook Obviously, it's going to be a huge part of of the uh, of the whole campaign. Uh, this was the introduction to the part two of the uh, Bloody Horn scenario song. Sorry, it gives you more narrative of what's going on. It then tells you what characters you can play. So the non-playable characters are Alvar because he's injured, of course, um, or he's poisoned, <coughs> and anyone you played in the first scenario, the um, the expedition scenario. So that means the remaining eight heroes. In, the, in this particular one, which was um, for 12, uh, you had to use those um, and then do it, dealing a wound to each. So it, it tells you what you need to do to set up the, uh, the people. Okay, for the camp phase, uh, in this particular time, you don't, the camp board never changes, okay? So these were my two. I had Petronia, which was the queen. She had a high number standing in the, uh, in the clan. She was Christianity. She had a dog. Uh, that she could send out uh, to scout and attack. She's very good at perception and will. But as you can see there, she only had two pips, only two abilities. So effectively, she had four health, health hit points. Then I uh, had Frody as my other one, which was the blacksmith. I love this character. He was so cool in the Kickstarter. Uh, he's good in attack and everything else. Um, he has a special ability. So on the left-hand side of his board, 
that's the special ability. These were the miniatures. So they had standees, but they also had some 3D renders of the uh, miniatures. Really cool to see. I was rotating around to have a look. Uh, was really, really impressed. Uh, obviously, they're low res compared to the real thing, but they were really impressive. Um, and I really personally love that. I know that another group played a demo and they used the standees because they've been painted, which is going to be cool. That can certainly be a negative. If people um, don't, don't paint and they don't want to see it's not going to be gray plastic as you'll see I, I think these are going to be the colors they're going to use um but it's certainly not going to you know it's not going to pop if they don't like sea of plastic there's no standy version of this game it's mythic games they love miniatures it's all about miniatures for for mythic games uh, for me i love that but it may put some people off so when you go and scout so your familiars can scout so uh, eagle's been sent out in this case and it scouted the uh, threat token, which revealed three of these enemies. As I said, what's really cool is when you first do that, you turn over the uh, the enemy card, AI card, and it tells you to read a paragraph in the story. It explains what's happening, what these characters are like, what feeds them. And it changes their stats depending on it. Now, it can change them to be incredibly harder, incredibly weaker, incredibly different and unique. Also on this tile was a hunt okay so it was a quarry so you can hunt this quarry if you're in the same hex and you you're able to get your clan more food um another area could be trees which could you could do to chop down trees to get wood to effectively upgrade things or in this particular scenario was to light the bonfire to make sure uh we kept the the shadows away from um alvar uh is really the narrative on this scenario was, was so good. I, I absolutely loved it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so this was an example of a familiar going off and scouting and seeing what the enemies were and how they were going to change it. Really cool. Um, again, the miniatures uh, look really cool. I cannot wait uh, to, to get these miniatures and paint them like every one of Mythic Games' miniatures, to be honest. Um uh, obviously, uh, we in the Kickstarter, it was unlocked in terms of all the familiars to be miniatures. Um, I think it's all the miniatures, uh, certainly the starting ones anyway, um, which is really cool. So we're going to be sending off these miniatures to go and uh, scout and hunt and what what have you. Going to be awesome. And the, the art on the board itself is really nice. So it's, it's a really nice camp board um, of, what, of what I saw for that expedition, uh, for that scenario, sorry. So... A bit more of an overview of the board itself. Um, so it had our ship launched, uh, sorry, docked um, on the bottom right there. And then we had to move Alvar, which is a token, which is now in the middle of the board, to that space, which is the camp um, from here. So you're kind of like carrying him. You're doing tests to do that. So it's not guaranteed. Um, but you set your kind of characters up to be able to do that, which is really quite cool. So you're kind of all working together. And that was one of my res reservations with the game was a lot of downtime. Uh, which would have not helped, but I didn't feel that at all. We had four people playing. Uh, we were constantly chatting. Is this the best way to do it? Shall we do this? Shall we do that? Shall we do this? Maybe even asking Sam a couple of times, like, what, what do you reckon? Is this quite a good idea? Um, just, just to make sure we weren't missing something really glaringly obvious. Um, but it was really cool. And you can see that we've got all the characters spread around here, which is really, really cool. Uh, <coughs> we've got, uh, obviously, the Hawk obviously took out one of the bad. Uh, bad guys that were in the top right there. Um, the owner of the hawk is here down down on what's called the totem where you can pray. You've got the central part, which is the camp body itself. Uh, then over on the left, you've got another throat threat token and one of those yellow letters, which is a story trigger. So you've got all these things on the board and you've got a certain, you have got time limit. It's going to be, I think it's going to be time limit on every single scenario um, with there's a turn limit. Um, and you're trying to hit these different objectives at the same time, which is really cool. What you can't see is over on the left-hand side, there was more story triggers and some more hunting and some more quarries. Really, really cool. Um, but as you can see, the miniatures, gonna, they're going to look outstanding once they're painted. I just cannot wait. And that, uh, that really, just looking at them close up as a 3D render was really cool. Uh, and it gave me an insight of what they might look like, which is cool. I mean, they're not, you know, in my hands, they're not... I've not seen them in real life, which is which is never as good. <coughs> but it w it was cool to see anyway. I'm really sorry. I've, I'm still still uh, recovering from this cold. 
Uh, also, you've got these like spawn points, which is just below the enemies, the blue enemies there. Uh, they're called totems, and you, that you, they're going different, to spawn different ones depending on which events you get, which um, fake cards you get um, at the start of each round. Now, with this camp um, scenario, so when you bring out the camp scenario, what's going to be really cool, and this is a prediction, and I'm sure, wow, it's not, it's kind of a prediction. It's kind of been stated on Kickstarter anyway, on the Kickstarter page anyway, is you're going to be upgrading this. As you move through the story, you are going to be upgrading your camp, okay? So uh, another great thing on the Kickstarter uh, campaign was uh, there were 16 buildings um, that got unlocked, three, you know, proper models of the, those buildings. So instead of uh, just cardboard kind of overlays, they're going to be buildings. Now, again, this is going to be more gray plastic. This may not suit some people, but for me, it's going to be awesome. So you can imagine, uh, for example, like Kingdom Death Monster. I love that you're building your society and your your kind of your base uh, with different buildings that do different things. This is going to be the same thing. So you, you saw a little GIF on the uh, Kickstarter page where they spent resources to build different things. So if you can build up some resources through the uh, scenarios, you're going to be able to build stuff in the what maybe would be called the camp phase or whatever it might be. Um, but knowing from the demos, it's all going to be embedded in this story. You're going to be going to the storybook. You're going to be listening to this narrative. Um, so that is the core of the game. It's this narrative side. If that's something that excites you, this is a game for you. If it's something you don't, particularly like you just like the gamification of games it's perhaps not the game for you and and i think that's a, an important point to make um but i love that aspect of it this this camp phase so obviously like most kickstarters you're going to get a lot of stuff for your money um from joan of arc i you know i just absolutely love that game the asymmetric the, the kind of how each scenario plays differently every time this i had the same feeling uh, when I, we played the scenario, um, it was very different to when I watched an, the same scenario being played by a different group. And it played different. Yeah, of course, the objectives are exactly the same. But it's played in different ways, either from character choice, how they move, uh, the test results, the different routes they take, the um, fake cards. <coughs> Excuse me. All of these make for replayability. So... Not only can you play this game through and have this amazing story, yeah, sure, you can play it again. You'll know what's kind of going to happen in the, the main storyline. However, if you play with different people, and this is what really excites me, you're going to be, it's going to play out slightly different for each one. Um, and that's really cool. I love that about Kingdom Death Monster in the sense that the, the story, you kind of make yourself with how you upgrade things, um, how you do on your quarries and all the rest of it. This feels very similar, except for with this this huge narrative um, embedded into it. You're going to get a load of these um, legacy type stuff as well, which is going to be, um, you're not going to know what's going to be on it as long as you don't spoil it. Um, really, really cool. Um, and it really did turn me around to, um, I'm definitely going to be backing this. I'm going to have to wait for the paycheck, but I'm definitely going to be backing it. Now, I really hope they extend the uh, pledge manager as they, as Leo said they would, um, which enable people to play this tabletop simulator mod and just get a feel for the game. He, they said the reason why they, it was getting extended was because they wanted to put a player aid. So when you haven't got Sam Healy explaining all the different intricate rules of how to play, you're able to look at this player aid and actually play the game yourselves. That, I think, was a very, very clever decision. What you don't want is people to be confused and just get put off by the whole experience. Tabletop Simulator is definitely nowhere near as good as playing the real thing. That is a given. Okay, so you're already at a disadvantage from that. However, having that Tabletop Simulator mod gives us all that ability to at least have a go and see what it's like for those that are on the fence of playing the game. Um, I also think maybe, uh, this is just a personal preference, that Mythic should perhaps prolong the Pledge Manager until Super Fancy Brawl starts to be delivered itself. Now, I know that they're on the boats. Okay, I know that the games are on the boats, so we should definitely be getting them. That's absolutely fine. But just for peace of mind and that confidence in the company, because it has been hit a little bit in the past, I just feel like keep that open until people get Super Fancy Brawl, start to see that getting played, 
uh, you know, videos going up about unboxings. I know there's been a couple for the review copies already, but getting played and all the rest of it. And maybe that will bring a bit, a little bit more uh, confidence and that will bring on more and more people coming into hell. Um, but the Norse mythology of it, the, the, the heavy story uh, narrative part that's all embedded in the entire game, I love. No downtime, a lot of table talk if you want to. You can play it solo. The miniatures are going to be absolutely fantastic and going to really pop on the board. The upgrade stages of the camp, the um, the individual uh, abilities of each of the characters, the fact you're going to be playing different characters and going to be you you will have some choice but not tons. Um, and some scenarios you may not have any choice. And I love that. I love that it directs you to certain characters you can you have to play, which really just spreads it rather than just doing the same four every every time. It makes it feel like a clan rather than just a group. Um, the, uh, the, the, the dice rolling, I do like, I, I'm a sucker for dice rolling. I love that. That's the way the tests are run. Uh, that's really cool. And just the whole upgrade and the legacy element. It really did turn me these demos. Uh, so thanks to Sam and Mythic, uh, and the people I played with, I played with, uh, most noticeably probably, uh, Preston and Rob from uh, the Discord community on the camp scenario. And it, it was awesome. It was so good. Um, so it's turned me to really want to play it. I feel that maybe other people that are on the fence, and I'm sure there are probably plenty, will want to kind of have a little go at the Tabletop Simu mod and see what I'm talking about uh, and, and really see if it's it's for them. It's not going to be for everyone. Of course it's not. It's a legacy game. It's a big game. Uh, each scenario is going to take a long time to play. There's going to be a lot of plastic, no standees, that could put a lot of people off as well. But if they're interested in Mythic games, they're probably going to be interested in miniature games as well. Uh, that's kind of hand in hand. Um, but that's my two cents and my kind of like thoughts about the uh, demo of How the Last Saga through Virtually UK Games Expo. I'm definitely going to be back in it and I cannot wait to get this in my hands. But we've got some things coming before that happens. Super Fancy Brawl. I love. I absolutely love that game. And I cannot wait for that to come in my hands. And then Solomon Kane straight after that. Wow, lots to be excited for. Okay, guys, thanks for uh, thanks for listening, and uh, you know maybe that will uh, give you some ideas and food for thought. Cheers. <laughs>